All right, and welcome to our latest HoopCast. We didn't know if we'd be doing another one, but Florida has forced us our hand on this. Kevin, we're here in uh, Gainesville getting ready to go to New York and cover the NIT Final Four. Three straight Final Fours for you. That must be pretty exciting. Here we are. Yeah, we're uh, we're playing into April, and uh, who would have uh, who would have thought it? Well, maybe you know the way karma is. I mean, Ohio State's in the Final Four too, yeah. so Florida faces Ohio State again. This will be the the third year in a row. But um, you know, give give Florida credit for rallying and taking this thing seriously. And I thought they really faced a, a tough atmosphere uh, Tuesday night in Arizona, in Tempe, Arizona. Um, you know, they had about 12,000 in that building, a lot of yellow shirts, very loud, boisterous crowd, and, and they were still with the team even down 17-3. I was very impressed with their crowd. But, uh, you know, Florida did the things they needed to do, uh, you know, late in the game. The final 10 minutes are down 50-48. to 48. They could have caved in, and uh, they played hard and, and were resilient and found a way to win that basketball game. Yeah, they did, and I tell you, it's, uh, it's amazing because when you talk to the players, you know, whether Billy kicking them out or making them do their own laundry – Making them understand. I, I still, I, I still don't buy completely that this is some revitalized team that they've all of a sudden understand what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I still think we're not going to know that till next year. They're, let's face it, and this is something I wrote, Kevin. You're playing in the NIT. That means you're playing NIT teams. You're playing teams that have problems, that have flaws. That's why they're not in the big tournament. They're at the kids' table. And uh, so, you know, while I give Florida a lot of credit for what they're doing, don't want to take anything away from them. I'm not buying that they understand what it takes to play defense, what it takes to win games until they do it next year, say at Tennessee or at Vanderbilt or against Alabama at home, you know, that kind of thing. The one thing that they've had in this tournament is very good physical matchups in terms yes. of, uh, you know, teams that they face that they, they have, they've actually been able to push around and, and, you know, they didn't have that same luxury in the SEC. I mean, even Arizona State, you're talking about basically two guys, Harden, who is a very good penetrator, and Pendergraph, who is an okay big man but got in foul trouble early, mm-hmm. and that kind of negated his aggressiveness. So uh, I think that, you know, uh, it gives you a little bit of respect for the SEC in terms of just the physicality of the league when you're watching some of these other teams that uh, Florida's facing. But at the same time, you're right. I mean, I, I think that uh, they've had favorable matchups, and I think that, that we'll know more about this team, uh, you know, when, when they face that intense competition in the league next year. But I tell you, the, the one thing that is good, uh, Kevin is, is that the sour taste is out of the mouths of Florida fans. And, and let's face it, everybody was down on this team after the Alabama game. They were probably down on themselves the way they played in the first half. They can't still explain what happened there. But this was a season that was going to end with, uh, let's say, if they go one or two and out in the, NC, in the NIT, um, people were going to say, man, that team, uh, I, you know. <laughs> now it's like, hey, the Gators, what about the Gators? Let's go watch them play in the Final Four of the NIT. So, you know, it, I think it's kind of gotten people back on that bandwagon a little bit. Yeah, they're revitalized. And, I mean, you know, who'd have thought that they'd be playing, you know, deeper into the season than, say, Tennessee, who lost yeah. last night to Louisville in the Sweet 16. It, it is kind of a, a, a strange you know, uh, coincidence and twist when you think about that. But uh, at, at the same time, I, I think it. Uh, I think it would be very interesting if they won it, just because it's never been done before. And uh, you know, uh, this is what the third time that they've been to right. the uh, uh, semifinals. And uh, if they were to pull it out, I, I think maybe it's something that carries over into next season. You know, it's interesting. I'm trying to track down uh, Denny Crum, um, the, you know, the former coach at Louisville in '85. They made it to the Final Four in the NIT. The next year, they won the national championship. I, I'm not suggesting Florida will make that leap, but uh, sometimes it can help your confidence when you when you have a run like that. Well, I can tell you where he is. He's in Charlotte because he's watching Louisville play, <laughs> and they are still playing. I get that one right, Louisville over Tennessee. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely, I think, is going to have an effect on this team. It's going to have a, a residual factor because this is a team that's needed something good to happen. You know, I still go back to my theory, which is that at the beginning of the season, they had no pressure on them, so they played pretty well. And then, uh, then the pressure kind of came when they got ranked and they were 18 and three. They didn't handle it very well. Then the pressure went back off. You're not in the NCAA tournament. Nobody cares. You know, it's the NIT, and they're playing loose and playing, uh, you know, having fun playing basketball again. Yeah, and I think that that's what really compounded during that stretch in February, and March, when they lost four in a row. It, you kept on saying, oh, just win one or two more games, and I think it really got to them, and it was one of those situations where what could go wrong did go wrong. I mm-hmm. mean, even, even that Tennessee game at home, when they got off to that hot shooting start, you kind of felt it was only a matter of when Tennessee was going to make their run and how Florida was going to respond to it. And, um, you know, Florida did show a little bit of resiliency in that game, but not to the same extent I think they showed in Arizona State, especially defensively in terms of, uh, you know, Shutting completely shutting a team down at the end. I mean, I think it was 14 to 4 in the last five minutes. You hold a team to four points in the last five minutes, 
you're doing some pretty good right. things defensively. Well, it's good. There's so many storylines in this tournament. First of all, you've got Travis Ford, who Billy was uh, was an assistant on the staff where Travis Ford played for Kentucky, who's a coach at UMass. Matt Bonner's brother plays for, for UMass. I'm, I've got a column on him. You can read it at gatorsports.com. You've got uh, Billy going back to the Garden, where he, of course, played and, and used to, as he was saying today, used to go to games and uh, pay five bucks to sit in the nosebleed section. And, of course, I think the, the, the kind of the more subtle one is Florida going to a place where they kind of got things started. The magical run really began in Madison Square Garden in that preseason NIT term. Yeah, and uh, that was really uh, quite an experience because, remember, they came into that tournament unranked, and uh, mm-hmm. you had uh, Syracuse and uh, Wake Forest, well, first Wake Forest and the late Skip Prosser, and then uh, Syracuse facing Syracuse in that championship game. And I just remember that game, uh, Joachim Noah, uh, you know, thinking somehow he must have thought he was in the O'Connell Center. He made a block against Syracuse as a pro-Syracuse cop, doing his little chest up like that. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, all those Syracuse fans booing him and just getting all over him. But, uh, you know, Flores showed some resiliency there and I, you know I don't know if it's going to have the same effect because obviously the season ends but uh, you know maybe you know you perform well in Madison Square Garden this weekend maybe it's springboard into next season yeah it, it very well could and it'll be interesting to see how they do I know it's a big week for Jonathan Mitchell going going back home and he's talked about how he's going to show everybody around show them some of the best places to go I don't think they'll have a lot of downtime but even you know here's what's funny even when they're in the final four of the NIT they can't escape the Tim Tebow shadow Tim Tebow will be in New York Tuesday night <laughs> as a finalist for the Sullivan Award. He just you can't get away from him. He's everywhere. <laughs> it's amazing. But that's when we were in New York the last time. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that was a good night for the, for the Gators. We'll see if this is a good two nights for Florida or whether we're coming home early. Yeah, and uh, you know it will be interesting if Florida does win. You know they're guaranteed a rematch either against Ole Miss, yeah. another SEC team, or Ohio State. You know two teams they lost to during the regular season. So if they do pull out the win against UMass, it'll be a good chance to kind of gauge their progress. If they play one of those teams, both, both those losses on the road, of course, you know, lose to Ohio State by 13 and losing to uh, uh, Ole Miss by two when they were yeah. down by 16, almost came back in that game. So uh, it'll be interesting on neutral floor to see, hey, maybe you can see how much this team has grown. Well, we'll be going up to New York and uh, hopefully survive it. And it's not going to snow, so we, we should be all right. <laughs> Till next time, this is Pat Dooley, the Gainesville Sun, Kevin Brockway, the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from the Sunshine State.